Welcome to the next part of uh, me just learning to tick weld. We're going to start with a similar exercise to the one that we finished the last video with. Running a dry puddle, but introducing stepping motion. Oh, that's not too bad. For the first path, I'm very happy. It runs hot, so I might go with less amps in general. Take a little bit more time for the puddle to establish and then see how I can control the heat. Just being able to exactly tell what is going on and what the issues might be just from having an online course. That is so good. I just ran paths 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. They're getting better. I still need to watch my stepping distance. I'm gonna run a few more and then just see if I can improve on those things. I've now finished 20 paths and they get much more consistent already. The stepping distance is very regular. The cleaning action looks nice all around. So I think we're ready to go to the next lesson. You want to break down as you have a look at how you did with this one. You want to have a look at your landed edge, look for that sweet spot that we talked about, and then look at the cleaning action. The first exercise that we're going to do is just puddles and then add some filler rod to those puddles. Nice, that worked pretty well. All right, let's do the others. What sometimes happens is that the filler rod makes these little strings where it doesn't really make a nice drop into the puddle. So I quickly prepare a few more plates, quickly. It takes quite a while. I've now marked smaller guidelines on the thinner plates. I hope that makes a difference. Second plate of the day. They're getting much more even. Could probably have blended some of them better into the base material. I've just watched the troubleshooting part of the last exercise that I've done. And does he actually address the problem that I had with the filler rod? I feel that I'm relatively consistent with my standoff distance, but the other thing I need to watch out for is the angle at which I introduced the filler rod. I would say ready for the next exercise. So this one is completing a path, kind of like the exercise with the stepping motion, but introducing filler rod. I think I did twice, but apart from that, those look relatively nice. I'm just gonna finish those four plates because I feel like this is the very, very fundamental, the most important thing. So I want to get this right. The start and the end are blended in well compared to this one, not even my 20th path. I'm very happy. What I'm noticing is that me making the conscious decision to not form such high puddles and knowing what I have to look out for, it works instantly better. That's a good end. That was the last one for today. I feel like it's okay to call it a day with these results. And then tomorrow, All right, good morning. I'm very happy with yesterday's results. It's cool to see the progression from those plates to those plates to those plates to yesterday's plates. I've seen that I need to order some new gas. It's kind of stupid because I can't order the gas on the phone. So I need to go there, order the gas, drive back, go tomorrow, pick the gas up. I don't know what their policy is. It might be a little high, but very consistently high. <laughs> Ooh, that's one I'm very, very proud of. Look at this one. I've just finished the two plates. Some should have been better, but I grow a few that are really, really good. So I'm gonna watch the next lesson. I think now with this one completed, we are halfway through the course. On the BMW, we need to be able to weld steel, probably much more than we need to be able to weld aluminum. But I think with this course, I can get a good understanding of the basics. And then I hope that those translate well to welding steel, welding stainless. So the next one is the butt weld. This one's great because we're actually gonna be doing the exact same weld that we were doing in the stringer beads lesson, but we're doing it over a joint this time. We want consistent bead stepping and we want consistent start stops. The first ones are still a bit far apart, but those are much nicer. I've just got a new gas bottle today, so we can continue with the course. It's crazy how fast I ran through the gas, but I guess I have been waiting quite a bit the last days. So that's good. Um, I like the progress. I have this plate that I'm gonna start practicing on just to warm up again. Then I'm gonna do a few more butt joints because I've watched the next video lesson and it talks about the penetration of the butt joint to the other side. With the butt joints, you need to put in more heat, but stay in the same kind of like narrow area. So you don't want to make it wider, but you want to give it more depth.
I know it's now getting a little bit hard to see which one we're looking at, but it's this one, the middle one. I like the consistency, it looks good. The cleaning action is nice. And if we flip it around, you can see that there's actually some penetration going through, but you can't really see the weld completely penetrating the plate. So I think I have to try again. If you reduce the stepping distance, you can actually increase the heat in one spot. I think it's still not the perfect thing I'm looking for, but Dusty also said that as long as it looks really good on the top side, you get some penetration. You might not get it all the way through, but I think for all of my applications for now, this is good. Time flies so quickly with these exercises, but I feel like looking at the penetration, it's crazy how much it already improved. Obviously, it's good to get all of the basics out of the way and get them good. But as soon as I now focus on getting a good penetration, the rest kind of like took care of itself. Now I can actually see like a drop of ink and then it dissolving and I know how I can actually manipulate it. You won't believe what happened after I've posted the first part. Instantly, Dusty replied and actually shot me a message and he offered me to help me with my progression because Dusty actually not only has the TIG welding course that is kind of self-paced, what I've been doing, but he also offers one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've sent him photos of some of my work and I've just received my first feedback lesson. And thus he showed me so well what I need to look out for, what I could improve on. It was actually funny when I edited the first part, how many things have tripped me up. Starting the arc, establishing the arc and all of those things, seeing what the puddle actually does, it comes with practice. So if you're just starting out to tick weld, just take your time and don't get discouraged by all of the things that are going on in the beginning. It's going to get easier with practice. <laughs> I've just finished my rather extensive warm up. I've done 26 stringer beats and I started taking more deliberate notes. It gives me an even better understanding of what I'm doing and what I need to look out for. I'm particularly focusing on a few things that Dusty pointed out in the coaching. One of those things is blended edges. You can see how much my consistency has improved. So this will hopefully set me up well for the next joint because now we're gonna work on lap joints, which are basically joints like this where I weld along this edge. And Dusty recommended to work on lap joints now because he knows that I'm building the BMW and this is a more custom bike related exercise Size. So let's see how it goes. Wow, that isn't too easy. I won this from the top to the bottom plate. This one is a real challenge. I need to practice on a few plates and just get a feeling for when I can actually introduce filler rod. Now the puddle on the lower plate looked like it was formed, but then I introduced the filler rod, it was way too cold. That is crazy. That makes such a big difference. So I, I've watched more of the lesson. <laughs> I have to say I started a little bit uh, early. I've seen Dusty using like a little block or something underneath that. And I just found these scrap pieces and then I welded this on quickly. And look at this. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's such a big difference. What this block allows me to do is have this at a more comfortable angle. Obviously this is only number seven, but I'm very happy that it kind of works now. I still need to figure out what the perfect puddle looks like. That's the main goal for this exercise for me right now. <sighs> I need some brain food. Compared to all the other exercises, this is actually one of the hardest ones and my mics are running out of battery, so I'll see you tomorrow. To start the day, I'm gonna run stringer beats and combine that with the tacking exercise. Nice. <laughs> oh, nice, that is so good. I've dipped again. It's strange because dipping wasn't a big issue before. Anyways, when you get a good puddle, the puddle between the two plates actually merges. I never understood how that would work. Look at this. There are still a few things that I have to improve, especially the filler rod placement. But apart from that, look at the difference from yesterday and today. It was just a matter of understanding that I had to give it more time than I actually thought. I've just finished my first few lab joints, the proper welds, and it was a rough start, but I soon got the hang of it. That is a good end to the session. It's crazy how it developed from not getting 
any good results with the tacking exercise to then when it clicked understanding what I needed to look out for. Even the progression from my first welds today to the last one now is crazy. Let me show you. This was the first plate that I've welded today. And now let me show you the last one that I've just done, which looks like this. Obviously there are still things that I can improve on, but for the results of my first day really welding the lap joint, I'm super happy with this one. With those results, I feel very comfortable with the lap joint and I think we can move on to the next two exercises. So I guess I'll see you tomorrow. This just arrived in the mail. It came in clutch because while I was grinding down all of the plates, I was questioning my kind of ambitious time plan. It, it takes so long to grind all of those plates down. So now we have new material. We've got two five millimeter plates and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three millimeter plates. For the filler joint exercise, I actually need a little contraption. That's the base for this exercise. So I can rest these in here and then weld like this from the top. So I don't have to worry about torch angle and all of that. Right now, I can just focus on getting a good weld and then later weld like this. I'm now gonna start by just tacking the plates in place. Going through this program, I've noticed how much my understanding of welding in general has improved because look at those tags. I, I feel like I'm a little too excited after the first one already. All right, I've tagged together three pairs using the fixture and now I'm going to move on to... Definitely not super easy, so I might need a few tries. All right, I've just done 30 tacks and I would say the last plate is a good representation of the struggles and how it looks when it goes well. You can really see it, how much it covers the bottom plate and how little is actually at the top plate. And my problem was that my torch angle wasn't right and I noticed that I need to use my wrist more to properly direct the arc between the two plates. But then flipping this around, you can see how much better the tags look. So with that, I feel comfortable to move on to the proper welds. Let's see how it works out. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's relatively even. It has a good, nice concave shape. It blends in well to the top and the bottom. Oh, that was a good one. And I touched the tungsten with the filler rod right at the end. Oh, that's so annoying. Let me show you how consistent I was because before I touched it, it looked so nice. Look at this. That's such a nice pass. And then this happened. Anyways, that happens. I'm just trying to practice a bit more. My main things with this exercise are the stepping distance, being consistent with that, and then actually having the puddle on both plates. Okay, I've just finished my 10th pass and I'm very happy with that one. So I think we can attempt the next challenge. That's not going too well. Let me show you. Most of my puddle is just at the bottom plate. I didn't expect it to be that hard. I feel like I need a little break. I, I'm not getting really anywhere. My welds at the moment look like this. So I'm gonna finish the day with a few stringer beads. Welcome to another day at the office. I already have warmed up with some stringer beads. Got some great feedback from Dusty. He said I should just focus more on my torch angle. I'm actually gonna go back to the tacking exercise of the fillet joint because getting the tacks right is crucial for understanding how the weld has to look like and how it performs. And hopefully it works a little better after having a little break. All right, the tacks, that worked well. Dude, but it's so uncomfortable holding the torch like this. I also bump into my table, so maybe I need to find my own technique for this one because Dusty recommends to leave your forearm on the table and not your wrist, but I might have to do it like this. This might be easier. Nice, that is so much better. I finished all of the tags and I think I've learned a valuable lesson. Let me turn this off. This is important. Learning something the correct way is good, but if it doesn't work for your style, you have to adjust it. I reached the limits of my gas. I did get two good ones in the end that I'm very happy with. Let me quickly show you these results. So I've started with that one and I'm especially proud of this one, which is the most consistent and the best looking one. So I get some new gas and see you tomorrow.
Today is Super Bowl Sunday and I've just finished my second fillet join session this weekend. I've done quite a few as you can see and I'm finally happy with the results. It's currently quarter past 11 and I was debating whether I should call it a day, go to bed or squeeze the outside corner joint exercise in and then start watching the Super Bowl. I'm gonna start by tacking the outside corners of the plates together so that I can then make proper tags. Now that I have all of the plates tacked together like this, I'm gonna make three proper tacks before I can then do the welds. After a few tries, I think I understand what I need to look out for. Before I only got these tags, but to get something like this, I had to reduce the heat and just be a little bit more cautious where I put my puddle and when I introduce filler rod. So let's quickly tack up the last plate. The last three all have a little string from the filler rod, but apart from that, they look okay. So I just go for the proper weld. I've dipped right in the middle, unfortunately, but the consistency is actually very good for the first path. This one fortunately seems much easier compared to the lap joint and the fillet joint. I had to slightly adjust my standoff distance because I dipped multiple times on my first and my second run. But apart from that, the consistency was there and the third one already looks much, much better. Nice. That was my best run and a good one to finish. I'm so happy, that worked out perfectly. It's now four minutes until kickoff, so I'm gonna head inside, watch some Super Bowl.